welcome once again, executives who may be finding this podcast, to an episode of Ghost Facers, a Supernatural Rewatch. You're welcome. My name is Richard, and sitting next to me, surrounded by this crackling fire, is my brother in podcasting, Reed. What you're about to hear are the musings, the machinations, the philosophy, oh yes, of two brilliant gentlemen Geniuses. undertaking the adventure of a lifetime, rewatching and commenting on the work of other people <laughs> through arguably multiple layers of reality. Buckle up. Because you, you've never listened to something like this before. And maybe you never will again unless you pay us. Yeah, do that. Pick us up. Pick us a podcast for your network. Yeah. Let's get into it. Ghost! Ghost Facers! We're facing ghosts! We're not just one on! We're ghosts! Ghost Facers! Stay in the kitchen when the kitchen gets hot! Ghosts! Ghost Facers! We're facing nightmare! We're facing dread! Ghosts! Ghost Facers! We're facing faceless! We're facing dead! Welcome to Ghost Facers! Today we're discussing Season 3, Episode 13! Oh my god! The Inception. The titular episode. Yeah, this is the last episode of the show, right? Yeah. We got to the title episode and we don't have to do any more, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's how all podcasts work. But there was, I can't remember if it was a Family Guy joke or something, but it was like, what if movies ended when they said the name of the movie? <laughs> there was just like a bunch of clips of people being like, uh, oh no, it's the Titanic. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do like those where they say the name of the movie. Mm-hmm. Look. The Russians pose a clear and present danger. Yeah. To- <laughs> but what if it happened the day after tomorrow? <laughs> That's why I have to become Superman 4, the quest for <laughs> yeah, peace. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. This is Ghost Facers. Holy shit. Covering Ghost Facers. Oh, my God. You just- yeah, we, we call this a pentaract. It's a five-dimensional box folding in on itself of us covering the, our namesake. Sounds like my ex-girlfriend. Oh! Five-dimensional box? Yeah. I, I mean, I, is that a compliment? I don't, or a- I don't really know. They said it couldn't be done. <laughs> Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could. Yeah, <laughs> but they did. April 24th, 2008. Holy shit. Written by April twenty fourth, two thousand and eight. Yeah, where was I? You always want to do this, and I I, I never want have to that... do it specifically with this one though, because it's the Ghost Facers app. Shh. Where were the Ghost Facers? Oh, us, of course. The the real the ghost. real Ghost Facers. Yeah, shots fired. <laughs> where were we mm-hmm. when this self titled episode came out? Oh gosh, I was. Uh... Oh God, that uh, that is challenging. I, I was finishing my second year of university, I guess, April two thousand and eight. How would we? How old would we, would we have been? I'd be, I would be twenty because my birthday is later in the year. Uh, I, I'd be twenty. I would be then. I would be uh, working in a restaurant somewhere. Yeah, like most of the yeah. time, I would have turned like twenty one that November. Yeah. Wow. I think that's crazy. I think <laughs> that might not be right. This is riveting content. Let me pull up my agenda. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're really starting to sound like the office ladies. Shots fired. Oh. I've been listening to a, their podcast a bunch because I love the office. Sure. Good Lord. The, uh, it is just challenging to listen to. Right. I, uh, because I, I was, and I was looking up like top rewatch podcasts. Looking for where are you going to show up? Uh, but I was just like, what, like what other rewatch podcasts are out there? And and they were like number one on all of these, and I'm like, come on, it's so bad. But it's just the popularity, right? One hundred percent. It's because the office is the best. It's not like an indication of the skill of the host. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Which is obviously true because we're incredible hosts, and nobody knows who we are. Yeah, that's got to be it. That's yeah, right. <laughs> Hello. They, there is that Parks and Rec one that's coming out with uh, Rob Lowe. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, I kind of don't like Rob Lowe. I only well, really... no, you're right not to write not to like Rob Lowe. I like him in the Parks and Rec, like yeah. I, in like very small increments. Like if real Rob Lowe was more like Parks and Rec, Rob Lowe, we would be a like lot better. Rob Lowe. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, not good guy. Anyways, written by Ben Edlund. <laughs> yes. Uh, directed by Phil Screecha. Look Classic. That. That's a good team up. Classic. Doesn't get much better than these two. I can't remember. Are the are they like? the team up on episodes featuring Harry and Ed. Oh, I don't think so. Because Ben Edlund's new, so he wasn't in the previous right. one. They may be in the in the next ones. We'll have to wait and yeah. see. I guess I was just wondering if you know, you know, like sometimes you get a pairing and it's like we haven't seen these guys. Let's like I want to work on that one. We did the last one. Yeah, I'll be curious. We'll have yeah. to that's something we'll have to keep an eye out yeah, I'd be on. Interested, yeah. Viewed by oh gosh. An estimated two point Two two. Holy shit! A million viewers. That's a crazy drop. What happened? I I don't know. Um, because the last one was like right around three or yeah. three something. Yeah, it dropped by like eight hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? Well, let's maybe watch the promo sure. and see if we can find out. Jeez Louise. Yeah, I mean, it's not a great promo. Because they put the fake TV static thing over all the footage. Uh, what do you What do you mean? A supernatural promo that added a bunch of extra stuff to the episode from but an also, effects like, standpoint? There's no dialogue. There's like, again, only playing the horror. Yeah, yeah. It it almost feels like the marketing does the show such a disservice, right? Where it's like, obviously, this it's, show the marketing does a obviously disservice. Obviously, it's rooted in horror, but like specifically this episode, that is not like what the vibe is going uh, for i know it's it, it plays it like it's a straight horror when this is probably one of the funniest episodes in a while yeah i mean it has very sincere moments in it too sure. but like it is generally it's a slapstick for laughs. comedy yeah yeah, yeah. It, it it boggles my mind that they're able to, to uh, they're clearly so disconnected because here's the thing they don't even show that it's a ghost facers episode no like if people have been watching the show or whatever like yeah I don't know. You could. I, I guess they've only been in one episode before this, but you could still like throw them in, and people would be like, "Oh fuck, it's them!" Or even just the yeah the notion of our real supernatural hunters and these paranormal investigators. I'd love are to see that episode. So even if you're new, yeah. you go. That seems fun, like a fun idea. Yeah, yeah. Th- I mean, this promo was nothing. No. Well, what's great is that they definitely learned their lesson from a marketing standpoint and always know how to market this show. Mm. I, I this is what you get when you get two marketers. I know. Doing well, a yeah, podcast. that's true. <laughs> but it's funny because I started. I got cable just as the show was ending. Right, and so I got to see all the final sort of stuff. Right, and it does not change at all. Really, it's still just like this epic <laughs> brothers. Yeah, making a choice. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that exactly will what it them is forever. Yeah, that's and it's just like all like crying and like yeah. I mean. Uh, I'm like, you stop trying to make it the things that were inspired by it's it. It's been 15 years. Yeah. yeah. But they just, for whatever, they always took the wrong things from it and then tried to, to market it like yeah. it was the things that took the wrong things from it. It was just like the Vampire Diaries. Like, the Winchester's face, the most dangerous foe yet. Woo! Themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just did a promo. Pay us. Thank you. You could literally use that for any episode. Yeah. Well, but we're talking about ghost facers, which means ghost, ghost facers. We face a ghost. What are those from that? Oh, you're doing the good one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let the listeners decide. Now we got to talk about international titles, though. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ghost facers. It's a thing. It's yeah, not. Yeah. Ghost facers is funny because it's like a made up specific yeah. term for the show. It's not like. A word in the vernacular no. was like, "Hey, d- did you ghost face on Tuesday?" Yeah, <laughs> like, um, oh man, I had a real case of ghost facing last night. Yeah, uh, ghost face killer. And most people, I'd say, got pretty close. Sure, uh, Germany ghost facers straight sure. down the board. Uh, the French felt like it needed one more thing. Uh, the ghost face. That's right. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The French it's, love their definite articles. It's uh, let's clean uh, add, yeah. add of the <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's the Facebook in France. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
the Hungarian title. Oh, hung- Hungary's pretty early in here. Yes. So I guess it's like uh, like Ghost Hunters or close. something like that. Very close. Yeah. But we keep the F. Ghost Funters. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I meant. <laughs> well, I don't know. You said we keep the F. It's Ghost Fighters. Oh. I mean, even further from what they're doing. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They fight the ghost. Uh, actually, I don't know. That's not a Hungarian. That's a French one. Ghost! Uh, ghost fighters! <laughs> They're in a pen. Who will come out? <laughs> ghost. <laughs> to enter, one will leave. Hell in a cell and a punch <laughs> of the ghost. <laughs> Take a folding chair to the ghost head. Ghost fighters. Uh, but, oh, it almost sounds like ghost fighters. Go- hmm. That's, that's... Uh, Oh, that's the well, what was the what was the this the spinning top things? Beyblade? No, before Beyblade. There, there was, was one before Beyblade. Yeah. I don't know then. Oh, I, it'll it'll. Someone's listening and, and upset because they know exactly. What I'm <laughs> There's one more. Okay, the Brazilian title. Oh, this is. Do they or do they not keep the F? <laughs> there is no F. Okay, but they're also like, I don't think that the. The format of this episode is the thing that we're focusing on. Oh, sure. Then I, I guess it's called, uh, uh, like, uh, corpse birthday, or something uh, like that. Uh, more, more specific on, uh, 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 on the actual villain of this episode. Oh, okay. Uh, scary janitor. You, close, but more about his thing. Custodian of death. It's more about. <laughs> It's more about the semantics of when he fights people or kills people. Oh, like uh, Midnight Ghost or something like that. The Leap Ghost. Oh, the oh sure. <laughs> Leap Dave Williams. Yeah. <laughs> comes out of the sea. <laughs> the Leap Ghost. Boing. Woo! That's right. The Leap Year thing. Yes. Such like an insignific- insignificant <laughs> detail. The thing that I forgot about until I read that, and I was like, Oh, yeah, they do mention that, I guess. It's only on a leap year. I will say that the 30 Rock Leap Dave Williams thing is one of my favorite made-up, like, lore things on any TV show yes. where they make an actual holiday for yes. Leap Day. So funny. Fucking Leap Dave Williams. You know? I, I love it. I, I think it's great. emerges from the sea <laughs> to trade children's tears for candy. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're officially in, speaking of candy, we are in... The scariest month of all. Uh, yeah, yeah, October twenty twenty one. Yeah, it's almost time specifically. For... Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's almost time for a werewolf bar mitzvah. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I've I've been doing. I mean, just little little tease for the coming weeks. I've been doing a little bit of like brainstorming of Ooh. what the extra monster lore will be. We did the knuckle V for Halloween. That's right. Last I don't know week. how you're gonna top that. I, I'm I'm brainstorming. I, I, there's a there's a couple of contenders. Oh, I'm excited. That yeah. was good. I mean, that was a big one for us. Yeah, we found out that I think through that episode, found out that a knuckle V is actually a bigger deal than we had thought. It is, and a listener to this show. That's right. Found a guy at the gym where she works out that has a knuckle V tattoo. Incredible. Which is, I mean, that's the most metal tattoo you could get. Yeah. A human horse hybrid with no skin and one eye, and it comes out of the fucking sea. I bet that guy's a real friendly dude. Yeah, he's probably really nice. <laughs> yeah, I bet he's. I bet he's real, real yeah. generous with his time. Yeah, and when he fights, he gives you the old knuckle of sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what I was gonna do with that, but I'm glad you took the nicer way of doing that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, some featured music from this episode. Sure. This is jam-packed full of good music. It is. We've got the Ghost Facers theme, yeah. obviously. Ghost Ghost Facers. We yep. face the ghosts when others will not. Yeah. The the lesser, the rip-off I song. Mean, we talked about this off mic. I legitimately was listening to this, and I was like, that's not how it goes. Because like <laughs> the timing, like the syncopation yeah. and shit is different. And I was like, I think I like ours better. Yeah. So I'm... Shots fired. Yeah. Uh, Supernatural Music Department. Yeah. Check out, uh, <laughs> look up Aaron Barry. Yeah, look up Aaron Barry, who did our our version of the Ghost Facers theme. Yeah. He has a band called Gracie May. Our versions. Yes. This is the, outro the outro one, one too. Because I asked for one and he was like, I couldn't help it. I made two. And I was like, boom, outro. Perfect. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, next, we've got We're an American Band. Yes. By Grand Funk Railroad. Yep. Uh, <laughs> That's a fun one. Yeah. Uh, those not fun ones. Uh, 
It's My Party by Leslie Gore. Yeah, Jesus. Not great. And my favorite one, and I wonder if they just named a song this because of the band name, is Hocus Pocus by Focus. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Hocus Pocus by Focus. Love it. Ugh. So good. TV Guide describes this episode as Sam and Dean start in a paranormal reality series that takes them to an abandoned estate that turns into one of the most haunted places in the U.S. for one night each year. It says one night each year, but no, it's not. No, it's leap years. Yes. Mm. One night every four years. Get your shit together, TV Guide. Yeah. For this and this alone. Yeah. Yeah. Go back. Fix it. We'll wait. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> Wow. I'm, I'm excited to get into this episode. I am too. But before we do, why don't we open up Dad's journal and learn about some of the real world lore? Yeah, let's see what the lore says about paranormal investigators. Oh! Yeah, baby. Can I tell you something? I feel like I may have already shared this either on other podcasts or on this one at some point. Right. But in our careers class in high school, I said that I wanted to be a paranormal investigator this has come up but i don't remember where yeah yeah what was it about that that made you want to well when i was in were you high just being like a dick and just saying something or did you legitimately want to be a paranormal investigator uh, we've talked about how much of a dork i was you sure was yeah yeah now i'm a cool guy <laughs> started yeah. by comic books. yeah now you're a cool guy who's deep into a comic book collection <laughs> <laughs> i uh I, I, I in grade nine uh, of high school um, and grade eight of grade school, I it was like right in the midst of when um, the Canadian uh, youth television, the YTV, right, was on a real. I, I mean, probably around the same time as this. Now that I think about it, but maybe not. No, that would have been earlier. But anyways, the the world was in a huge uproar about paranormal investigation. Yeah, there was like a huge thing about it. But YTV had a bunch of shows about it it was really like a heyday for that though it felt like there was a real like cultural swing yeah, yeah. there was uh, uh linda blair hosted like a haunted places tv show oh shit really yeah it was really good probably my favorite one there was just a bunch of stuff that came on like friday nights and over the weekend on 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 some of the, the kids television shows that i would watch and they were all about that and i got super deep into it right i never really liked the reality show ones like these like like that these these are sp sort of spoofing but the like the like documentarian version of it where it's right. just like let's just talk about how spooky this place is R right yeah not the ones where people were purporting to be like yeah i'm an expert here's yeah. my gear like, yeah, not yeah, that yeah. Shit. yeah yeah the yeah, thing yeah. that came the, those are the things that came off of that inspired by sort yes. of like the bump in reality tv at the time but I I loved it. I, I was so into it. And I was like, this right. is a career path, right? Right. People get paid to do this, don't they? I mean, technically. Yeah. I yeah. I, I, I didn't really understand the piece, the, the components of how I would sort of get paid to do it one day, but I definitely knew all of yeah. the components of how Number to one, do it. Uh, scam someone. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> but I was so excited uh, 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 about the prospect of doing it that right. I did a whole like my career class was all about how I was going to do it and that's hilarious the things the, the, the careers teacher is like ah oh, Jesus like this, come on that's not the point of this class and I'm like no these are the science classes that I need, need to take right uh, I need to do a bunch of like tech background. I'm gonna. You technically like fulfilled the rubric of the assignment, but you landed at like the weirdest, worst possible. The conclusion. one that is not a real career. And yeah, would be very challenging. It's like I want to be a celebrity, but also about a thing that only a few people care about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One day I'm going to. There'll be radio on the internet. Yeah, and I will specifically talk about <laughs> one TV show. Yeah, for seven years and not really make any money. And I will make almost no money. I'll spend more money than I definitely made. Yeah. <laughs> Careers. Yeah. We're good. Anyways, paranormal investigators. Incredible. All right. Paranormal investigators. It's a, it's a pseudoscience involving what? the tracking, recording, and interaction with ghosts and other like spectral anomalies. The pseudoscience piece, I, I, I don't, I'm not coming in hot and saying <laughs> ghosts aren't real. Sure. I mean, they aren't, but <laughs> but that's not uh, what that's not what makes it a pseudoscience. What sure. makes it a pseudoscience is that like the methodology of paranormal investigation is very 
Suspect? Suspect and loose. Yeah. If you wanted to treat it seriously like a science, then yeah. there's a level of academic rigor that is missing from the practice of paranormal investigation. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, the pseudoscience isn't specifically about whether or not ghosts are real, but rather that uh, the methods of evidence collection, data analysis, and hypothesis testing are not rigorous enough. Yeah. Um, so, paranormal research itself dates back, I mean, People obviously have believed in and been fascinated by and have made up lore about paranormal stuff forever because that's oh, the yeah. whole premise of the show. Um, but the idea of like specific paranormal research dates back to the 1800s, uh, like an organization like the Society for Physical Research, which was an organization whose stated goal was that's to- That's what I call the bedroom. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> was to approach the unscientific scientifically. Yeah. So they studied uh, hypnotism, mediumship, apparitions, haunted houses, and other like supernatural phenomena. Was Houdini part of this? Oh, may have been. Because I know he was like huge into that. May have been. Uh, they published a book in 1886 called Phantasms of the Living, all about apparitions and hypnotism. Yeah. And stuff like that. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about some of the methods that a paranormal investigator might use to see if a ghost is real or doing something. Yeah. So um, big ones. Uh, they measure electromagnetism. We see this on the show a lot. They... Uh, they use their like EMF uh, reader. So it, the thought being that spectral forms have an impact on electromagnetic fields. So you could measure differences or, or big swings or variations. And that would be some sort of proof that something supernatural is occurring. There. Sure. Something spectral yeah. is happening there. Uh, some uh, also use compasses for a similar reason. If the compass stops pointing north and starts pointing somewhere else could be because of electromagnetic interference is compasses is that the plural yeah hmm. not compi well no because it's not you well, that's a whole that's a very different thing actually yeah that's different <laughs> good lord <laughs> you took all of like the all of the, the like metaphor out of the word creep <laughs> he's calling a compi pie still in there jesus that wasn't the bit that needed to be replaced i mean i left some mystery no pie <laughs> Does that mean it's baked? No. Good Lord. Um, <laughs> what the fuck was I? Uh, oh, yeah. Likewise, uh, they use analog and digital cameras and video and audio recordings. So part of that is, A, to just record what they are seeing, seeing and hearing yeah. so that there's a record of it. Yeah. But also kind of tied to the electromagnetic thing. Mm-hmm. There's the idea that maybe recording devices will pick up on distortions and things that the human eye won't perceive. Sure, so yeah. there's things that could get picked up that way. Uh, measuring temperature. Uh, changes in temperature, usually like temperature dropping, is associated with ghosts and specters and stuff like that. So they'll use things like... Uh, uh, like thermometers and what do they call them? Thermogenic cameras and infrared. They use these sort of things to kind of measure yeah. uh, changes in, in, in temperature and stuff like that. I mean, also a lot of historical research on the area or what the lore of the place is the, you know, there's a lot of sort of like in, intuition in paranormal investigation, like the feeling of dread, like that's, a, you know, we've talked about it on the, poltergeist one or whatever that like that is supposed to be a uh a symptom uh evidence of something spectral happening is just this sort of overwhelming feeling of dread oh so you must have ghosts surrounding you all the time i am a ghost basically <laughs> well, i mean um, that's a dream oh one day <laughs> one day uh, you know, sometimes they'll bring like props and things, things that are like small and light that a specter could interact with so that they say, like, if you're here, like knock over the candles, like what methods of potential communication and things like that. Those are all tools that paranormal investors. So when like use. 007's like, like snipering into a room and he shoots over a glass and you're like, it must be a specter. <laughs> Spectre's also a 007 thing. It's, of course it is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's That's why I did the 007 yeah. theme. Yeah, we're, we're good at this. <sighs> Anyways, uh, ghosts, uh, investigations. Jesus. <laughs> so some of the skepticism, <laughs> uh, skepticism around paranormal investigation. So again, 
trying to focus it on the way that they conduct their investigations, not whether or not the thing they're investigating is worth investigating. As I like to call it, fake booze. (laughs) (laughs) You like me. You love it. So proud of yourself. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, why wouldn't I be? God damn it. Uh, so, the goats are not real. It's fake booze. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> first things first. Some of the tools used by ghost hunters or paranormal investigators for, like, uh, measuring temperature. So, things like a thermographic imager, uh, thermal imaging cameras, infrared <laughs> thermometers, and that. Yeah. They only really measure surface temperature, not ambient temperature so if the point is that the ambient temperature drops because of a ghost's presence you're not actually measuring that with some of those tools oh they're just the wrong tools (laughs) basically um uh a big piece uh of skepticism is about the jumping to conclusions so i'm going to use the example of a thing called or what do you mean by that jesus (laughs) Oh my God, so defensive. <laughs> um, this thing called orbs. So in some photographs that are taken, yeah, these sort of glowing orbs of light will show up. And they weren't seen in the room, but you take a photo and they show up. Sure. A paranormal investigator goes, look, a ghost. Yes. And the scientific process would be like, what other things could cause this? Yeah. And it could be, especially back in the days of flash photography or the early days of digital cameras, it, it was like, like water droplets, dust, dust the lend, yeah. shit like that would reflect it. You wouldn't have seen it in the room, but because of like the way that a camera works, yeah, yeah. it would pick it up. Totally. But instead of like seeing that and then trying to remove that variable and then test it again yeah, to see yeah. if, it, which is the scientific process, right? We need to make sure it's this thing. So let's make sure there's no dust in the room. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. water droplets in the air, and then we'll take the picture again and see if it happens. Yeah. Instead of doing that, they just go, "It's a ghost." Yes. So this is part of the the skepticism about the practices that they're like their methods of research do not hold up to scrutiny because mm-hmm. they are there's a lot of like confirmation bias and shit like that sure. in paranormal investigating. Um also it ignores the fact that there is no scientific merit or principle behind the idea that like when you physically die not only not only is there no specific evidence that there's a distinction between body and soul seven pounds uh (laughs) but secondarily there's no evidence or specific line of logical reasoning that would get you from physical body with bone and muscle and and whatnot to spherical orb of light that is not seen by the eye but picked up by technology like there's so many logical like jumps and none of those things are filled in so you can't go to that's a ghost because you haven't filled in the other things we haven't set up that ghosts even look like that yes so you can't even if you ignore the dust kind of thing and refraction of light you can't say that's a ghost without setting up that you know what a ghost is right you like that's the scientific stuff that's missing from the practice of investigating that being said None, ha- no, inve- no real scientific investigation has really been done enough to say one way or the other. Well, actually, that's not true. All scientific investigation, any any time someone has come forward and said there was a ghost, and then the the a thing was submitted to actual scientific investigation, it has never come back conclusive. Yes, like as in, like you cannot scientifically prove these things. Yes, that's the bi- there's a bigger question of is this does the, maybe we just lack the tools or something sure. like that. And that's a totally different thing that you can't argue. But the 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 thing that you you the thing that you cannot argue is that if you were going to prove it, you have to do it in a rigorous way that actually proves it, not just suspects it. Yes. And that's the piece. That's the the thing with science is it's entirely possible we don't have the tools to actually identify yeah. things like spirits and ghosts. Yeah. But you won't prove it by not taking a scientific approach fair and that's that's the real piece there yeah um yeah and then lots of like methodological mistakes uh so uh yeah if they were going to like achieve actual results they'd have to be a lot more 
scientific. And mm-hmm. then they would probably merit further, more legitimate research. But right now, they don't. Wow. Uh, a couple of famous ghost hunters, mm-hmm. just because that's fun shit. Um, there's a guy called Harry Price. He was Ooh, a, good spooky name. Yeah, he was a British parapsychologist, uh, kind of born in the late 1800s. Uh, he was a psychic researcher and an author. When you go to uh, like a waxing place, do you have to pay the Harry Price? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So he he gained public prominence because he would investigate um, physical phenomena and expose fraudulent uh, fraudulent spiritualist mediums. Mm. So he was kind of a guy that would go in and be like, "You're not this." Uh, Houdini was, did that shit. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> th- he did he did a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, he wrote like there was some. <laughs> supposed haunting or whatever and he took photographs of what was meant to be ectoplasm and he said it uh it looked artificial and blah 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 like he was sort of like debunking shit so he was like a ghost hunter in that he was like he was trying to like apply some rigor to claims i think though he was the sort of guy who was like this stuff is out there but these ones aren't it. he was like yeah. i think trying to like Defe- legitimate le- legitimize what he does by yes. debunking he was stuff like you're making done. us all look crazy yeah <laughs> like <laughs> he was kind of doing that shit yeah um most famous ones though probably for contemporary people are ed and lorraine warren mm-hmm. they were the she claimed to be clairvoyant and is that were, the one that they the te- the movies are made out of off so of? Yeah. they were involved in the amityville horror yeah. which has largely been debunked but uh, they're in the Conjuring. That's like Patrick yes. Wilson and what's her name Vera Farmiga. Yeah, great. That they they play the Warrens. Great they movie. are like exceedingly famous. That whole series, that spinoffs and stuff too. They're all about them. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he was uh, he was like a self taught and self professed demonologist. Sure. And she was like a clairvoyant and a, a trance medium and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, they were yeah they were involved in Amityville Horror. They were involved in a bunch of a uh, bunch of other things. But they're like uh, extremely famous sort of um, in paranormal investigators and sure, parapsychologists yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Hell yeah. And then there were like all those TV shows that I can't name any of the people from. Yes. But like there were lots of those. There was a real glut of them for a while of like ghost hunters. Yes. That might have been the name of one of the shows or something too. But yeah. That, uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I In fact, um, the... Uh, like this episode in particular is a parody, a parody of the show Ghost Hunters from 2004. Yeah, there you go. From sci fi. So it's also the first time that they're called Ghost Facers. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. We, we were calling them that, I think, probably in the last time that they showed up. But because they we just know them as that, yeah. but uh, they, they weren't. They were the Hellhounds. That's or right. Last time. Yeah. So now they actually beget to become that. And this very fun episode. Are you ready to get into it? Yeah. Should we play the should we play the the theme from the actual episode like here like insert it in here and then we'll we'll get see into if it? I remember to do that. Yeah. Now, only time will tell. Yeah. <laughs> we begin with the then, of course. Yeah. We still we still are fitting within that format. We get some sort of general supernatural ghost hunting from the previous seasons. Yeah. And, and you know, stuff about Sam and stuff about... Dean dying. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, we get the last time they ran into Harry and Ed. Yeah. We get stuff about the Tulpa. Yeah. And as the title frame of the show starts to uh, come into, uh, into vision, it's interrupted by a new broadcast. Ghost Facers, we face the faceless, we face the cat, 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 we
<laughs> even gets like a like a staticky like yes. something is overtaking the Which show. Which I think is very fun. It's I, a very cute approach and like Supernatural will do this more yeah. as seasons go on. I do like those kind of like fourth wall breaky kind of things. Whenever they play I like with when, it. I yeah. like when the Universal logo does something insane. You know, like yeah. the Too Fast, Too Furious thing with the hydraulics. Like I like it when... Or, you know, the the Matrix, the Warner Brothers logo is all in green and shit. Yeah. Like, I'm a sucker for, like, messing with shit like that just to get you more immersed. Or when shows so, will, like, I'm in. partway through, they decide to, like, they're like, hey, this is going to be the new main character of this episode. And then they go back to, like, the beginning, of like, the intro of a yes. show and, and change it. Yes. I, I love that shit. I'm a big sucker for that stuff. I know it's a little kitschy, but, like, I'm in. I, I'm totally in for it. So we now see Ed and Harry are dressed up. Sitting in front of a fireplace in chairs a la Masterpiece Theater. I know, but it's so clearly like rented tuxes. Like they. Oh, yeah. They're, they're in these tuxes. They're sitting in the shittiest chairs ever. These like kind of old, that sort of like 70s kind of almost like burlap feeling oh, kind yeah. of upholstery. Totally. They're sitting in these chairs. And, you know, they do the thing like put their like fingers up to yes. their lips to look very pensive, but they're just saying stupid stuff. Much like our acceptance uh, video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. Uh, yeah. Our acceptance uh, video that we had made for our uh, the the uh, uh, n- best arts podcast. Outstanding arts series yes. for the Canadian Podcast Awards. Yes. Which we won for our other podcast. Yes. Dr. The, DC, if you haven't checked it out. The lesser podcast of the two. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> so they are now touting their new pilot at the bold new future of reality TV. Yeah, yeah, they're like, they're like pitching. They're like, oh, exacts. Basically, they're like, if you're seeing this, yeah, this unsolicited video, yeah, yeah, this un- the unsolicited pilot you're about to watch. So funny. It's like it's so funny that they're acknowledging, yeah, that nobody's asked them to do this. Well, also they acknowledge something else. They uh, Ed specifically mentions a writer's strike. Yes. So the writer's yeah. strike. That we've talked about at the beginning of this season, which was currently happening from yeah. November 5th, 2007 until February 12th, 2008. So we're past that at this point. Yeah. So it was enough time for them to put it into the show. I really like that what he says is like, you know, I know you've had a lot of grief from those yeah. writers. Who needs them? Yeah. And then they proceed to make the worst reality TV show they can. So like, good. That is a very, very like funny, smart thing for a writer to write which is like oh yeah make more reality tv like this fucking shit yeah and it's like see you want something good you come to a goddamn writer and it's not the last time the writers will have a voice in this show no no i fucking love that though so good i i, I really like that so that cues the ghost facers intro yeah so we're essentially this episode the whole premise if you hadn't watched it but you just like listening to us yeah is that we are watching the pilot episode of ghost facers yeah sam and dean show up in this episode but it's incidental it's like they're they're just it's they're also there and they end up in the footage because they're also there but we are watching the footage that was recorded and prepped and edited by these guys by the ghost facers well and it also can be considered a kind of a pilot for the future web series spinoff yes. also for supernatural that's right that was all that was the ghost facers tv series that's right so a, there's like multiple levels going on here. Love it. So we cue the Ghost Facers intro, and then we show Ed, Harry, Spruce, Maggie, and Corbett. Sa- and yeah. Sam, and, and it's basically like their intro to their TV show. You get to see all of their sort of team. You get to, There's bits of Sam and Dean through shaky camera work. Yeah, yeah. Dean flips them off, and yeah. they keep that in the opening. So funny. Uh, I, love the, I love the editing of, of this. Yeah. Actually, even in that entry bit where they were kind of like where they're sitting in the yeah. chairs in, yeah. in the tuxes, because theoretically they have also recorded and edited this. Yes. But you get a very quick shot of uh, Harry like dimming the lights. Yes. You see his hand dim the lights and it cuts back to them. But they yeah, must they kept have edited it. that in. Like Insane. That's the funniest shit to me where it's like, <laughs> it's like they're also bad at it yes so it's like they've edited this thing they didn't have to put that in but there's like oh the lights changed like 
almost like they were like, well, we should show how that happened. Or they just like were quick cutting everything. Yeah. Like they were really not sp- like spending any real they time. They missed that one little thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. That makes me laugh so much. Because guess what? When you're editing some some stuff and you're doing it very quickly, sometimes that kind of stuff happens. What do you mean? Uh, anyways, so uh, we could see yeah, Sam and Dean through some uh, uh, shaky camera work. Uh, what looks like a, a haunted house setting. Yeah. Uh, Ed and Harry pull up uh, uh, it, it now in their vintage AMC Gremlin as the beginning of their episode actually starts. Yeah. So... They and they do a fake slow mo walk. Yeah, because they don't have the technology for slow mo, so they get out of the car very slowly. A kind of awkward walk. They both make sure they have briefcases that say "Ghost Facers" yes. and that that's facing the camera. Like they're doing this the, very like cumbersome you can sort see of slow mo walk, recreating the beats of reality yes. TV. But they don't have the expertise or the skill or the tech to do it. Yeah. Like, it's very funny. It, I I love that part. Uh, they uh, they also reveal in like um because you're doing a lot of those like reality TV show like uh, f- like the interviews that are sort of like posted the or confessional confessional things. things. Yeah, yeah. So there's a confessional where they reveal that they can they they can start ghost hunting at six o'clock thanks to the flexibility of their job at Kinkos. Yeah, they pretty much run the show at Kinkos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we can we, yeah we we can basically start at like six six o'clock this yeah? feels like another one of those things i mean it's not it's not in no way the same as some other stuff that's even in this episode but the there's a that kind of joke also yeah. is dated in a way sure where i think like now we're like yeah like if you fucking work at kinko's good for you yeah but it was like so easy like so easy to shit yeah, on just people that just like have jobs. Yeah. Where it's like you need Kinkos or they wouldn't have a business. So yeah. why would you shit on someone for working there? So funny. <laughs> like it's not it's not as bad as like some of like the homophobic stuff or whatever that's like also in the show of this era. Yeah, this episode like, we'll talk about it later, but actually doesn't do that bad of a job with this. So I, yeah, I have some weird, complicated thoughts about it because I went in bracing myself because we knew that 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 was a component of this it's a part of it yeah so yeah this show sort of and a thing that a lot of these other uh, investigative uh reality shows do is they break it up into sort of like what are the like sections of the job yeah so we begin begin with phase one which is the homework yeah so (laughs) yeah they're in like their hq yeah yeah they have their strategy meeting with the team a la ghost hunters in uh, ed's parents garage it's just such like they come in and Ed goes over to the whiteboard where Corbin is like putting pictures out and he goes, no, these pictures have to be up here. I got to see the whole thing. Yes. Where it's like, he's not saying anything, but he's got a like big dick swing yes. his way in that like he knows the the way to do it. Yeah. yeah. So funny. It uh, is very funny. Uh, also, if you look inside the garage, there's a poster uh, on the back uh, reading Coven. Yeah. That can be seen uh, on the inside of the door. Uh, Coven is a 2000 uh, short film directed by Mark Beauchard, uh, whose production is depicted in the documentary American Movie in 1999, a cult favorite. So mm. a fun little sort of side piece there. But we begin introducing the characters now. We're going to yeah. see who are all these people. So we have Corbett, who is the intern slash cook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we have Maggie, which is Ed's adopted sister. Well, he says it's Ed's sister, and he goes adopted sister. Yeah, yeah. They're they're quick to to throw that in there. Yeah, because that wasn't evident. Uh, yeah. So, and then there's Spruce, who's like the main kind of camera op. He's fifteenth, sixteenth Jewish. Okay. Yeah, they and they, one sixteenth Cherokee. They cut away to all these people, and it's played for comedy. Like these are all just weird losers making this like basically fanfic. Yes, pilot reality yeah. TV thing. Sure, even if they all kind they. I mean, I think they all earnestly believe in the supernatural, yeah. and the paranormal, but like they are not good at this. No, so they're playing it for comedy as you're meeting these characters. But I did kind of have like a eh, moment with Spruce. In the way that I did during the Bugs episode. Okay. Because the joke is I'm 15th, 16th Jewish and one one 16th Cherokee. Cherokee. That is funny because it's like the white people trying to claim any sort of native ancestry is very funny to me. But then they kind of, they push it too far because he says like, my great grandfather was a moil. My great great grandfather 
was a degenerate gambler and had a peyote addiction. Like he doesn't oh, yeah, say yeah. the native one, but yeah, it's like that's yeah. what you're implying. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, that didn't have to be no, there. No, but and they, that felt like the fucking bugs thing, where it's like you. This is not great. Yeah. Absolutely, but the jo- the initial joke of the fifteen sixteen very funny is very funny, and that makes him the shamanologist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we then review uh, uh, the legend, which is every four years on February 29th, the leap year ghost Morton, uh, uh, basically the Morton house becomes the most haunted place yeah. in America. Yeah, exactly. And so we're coming up to that, that leap year. Absolutely. Yeah. Harry does a private interview then talking about how he likes Corbett, uh, but he's kind of concerned that he has the hots for Ed. <laughs> yeah, there's some moment where like Ed says something well, to Corbett and there's a kind of like a lingering. Well, Corbett brings something. him a coffee right. and he's like, I put an extra like thing of spit cinnamon in there, and he's like, eh, like I did this for you. Yeah, yeah. And and Ed, and Ed's like, Thanks, man. Like, yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah, uh, and ha- Harry's like, I think uh, you know, this is gonna like cause problems with the investigation not like in a homophobic way yeah, but yeah. just kind of like we don't fraternize in the group yeah and and corbett's like they, they then have like a confessional with corbett who's just like yeah it's got that golden beard and <laughs> yeah he's got that rugged kind of <laughs> and then he's like harry's nice too <laughs> it's kind of it's cute i really like the guy playing corbett he's yeah so fucking good yeah i really like him a lot he's yeah. he's in a lot of stuff seen him in lots of stuff before he's yeah. definitely of all of the people in the show probably the one who's like the sort of expanded the most and done the most stuff he's uh in that new ed helms show um yeah he's great i really like that actor a lot yeah i'm actually gonna look him up while we keep going yeah he's so. awesome so we then go into phase two infiltration the, we see the ghost facers break into the Morton house, uh, uh, like probably around like 10 o'clock ish. Uh, and as they're sort of, they, they get up to like the gate of it and they're like the police, you know, uh, are got sick and tired of people breaking into this place. So they've got this lock and they pull out like lock breakers. Right. Uh, yeah. Maggie or someone is like, did you get a permit? And they're like a permit. That's a good idea for next, next time. time. <laughs> Just a very funny line. I like that. And as they're about to break in, we hear the roar of an engine. Yeah. And they're like, oh shit, it's the cops. And then you hear like, we're We're an American American band. band. And fucking Sam and Dean drive by. Nobody clocks who no it is. No one clocks who it is. But they're like, and then they go like, oh, it's not cops. It's just Hicks. Yes. And then they keep breaking into the, the So house. funny. They see Sam and Dean rolling by, uh, scoping out the place. They've got like flashlights out and all that stuff. The ghost facers then head into the building and set up their command center one. Also Eagle's Nest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I love. Yeah, they're like, this is command center one. And the, the, yeah, 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 Ed says that. And then, oh, he was on Shit's Creek. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's in lots of stuff. Yeah, he is. He yeah. was the veterinarian, I think, in yes. Shit's Creek. Oh, and fucking Dirk Gently's. Oh That's... yes, yes. Oh man, lots of stuff. He's a he's he's great. He's yeah. got a very like um, great actor, memorable like a uh, uh, thing he's got. A... Yeah, he's a, both like very sweetly innocent. He's got like that kind of thing yeah. going on. Yeah, definitely. So they then set up their command center and break apart, setting up cameras all around the house. And there's like music playing and yeah. I mean, it's funny because even though they are obviously not the most competent this is probably like the most competent they look throughout the whole it's the most show. competent they look and like weirdly like they're almost pulling off yeah. making this pilot yeah like, it's you know like you know basement cam one yeah but, uh, you know they're setting them up they've got the command center they've got like all this gear and they've got like all those travel yeah. cases and shit and you're you're like they're gonna do it you know like they could pull this off there's like, a funny scene where corbett is setting up his camera and ed goes like looking good corbett and he's like Thanks. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what? Yeah, it's good though. Like it's e- e- both in the show and out of the show. It's a decent little yeah. moment of reality TV. Absolutely. Like they're kind of pulling it off. Definitely. So yeah. they go down to the main room and start rolling cameras. Yeah. We get into phase three, FaceTime. <laughs> yeah. Which very different thing nowadays. But. Is that what they have? They already done their like hands in. Thing? Well, they right before that they do yeah. their sort of like yeah, like ghost faces on three. Yes, one, two, three, ghost faces. Yeah, I I wish that we did this on video so we could do that too. <laughs> I kind of love it, but I I like that moment though because it I think it does reinforce that it's not a joke to them. Yeah, 
Like yeah, they all they are, all take it. They're seriously. not like rolling their eyes yeah, doing it. They're yeah. like, yeah, we're the fucking ghost facers. We yeah. have equipment. We set it up. We're gonna find a fucking ghost. Like they both believe in it. Like yeah. Yeah, Ed and Harry want to be rich and famous, but they also want to be rich and famous on this thing they believe yeah, in. Yeah, like, yeah. And then everyone else is bought in. Like, I really like how kind of sincere it is. Yeah. It's just that they're bad at it. It's not that they're being, like, kind of craven. Or, or, you know, you know and honestly, I mean? like, they're not even that bad at it. They're just the same type of all of those other reality shows. Like, they're not that much different than any of those other reality, reality shows. They're a little bit more of a shoestring yeah, budget. Yeah, sorry, what I mean is they're they're bad at the actual, actual ghost deal, hunting. dealing with, like, the actual supernatural. Yes. But you're right. And I think that's why that earlier beat works, is that they clearly know what it's supposed to look like. Yes. You know, they're like, well, no, if we're going to do this, we need to have all this equipment. Yeah. That's what the big guns use. Yeah. We have to have all of this. That's what they use. This is how we're going to set up the show. Exactly. They clearly know that stuff. They just have such little understanding of valuable actual experience ghosts. or knowledge of the actual subject matter of the actual ghosts. Except for they're probably actually more experienced than than other ghosts like shows like this because they've encountered real ghosts once other they've one other actually time, encountered a tulpa yeah which we're about to talk about so i think it gives them the sort of false confidence yes. that really like propels them and they've got such big dick energy they really yeah yeah so the ghost facers now begin to search the house with their instruments taking readings seeing weird equipment fluxes and here's the thing, they're using like they're using an emf thing yeah that's what the guys use yeah so they're not wrong yeah they're trying to measure temperature that's mm -hmm. what the guys do yeah they're not wrong no but there is a fun moment with harry where he's like we're doing a standard but and it kind of it kind of sounds like he's just making up words yes like he's talking about what they're sweeping yeah, for yeah, or whatever yeah. but it, but they are technically doing what sam and dean would do absolutely yeah there is a funny scene where harry goes up to a door one he's he like was gonna open it with his foot and Maggie's like, just use your hand. Okay, like, he can't open it. He's yeah. like, and he's not putting in enough effort to actually kick it down. Spruce or Maggie is just like, use the doorknob. Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, good idea. So he opens it. You see the camera flash around a bunch. Harry screams and runs out of the room. Yeah. Uh, and is basically like, it's a 4.5. Like it's he immediately just assumes it's a ghost. We then see that it was actually a rat just on a the dead floor. Rat. Yeah. <laughs> Harry runs away, comes back, and was just like, "So, uh, uh, I saw there's some some spe spectral stuff happening. So, what was it?" And yeah, he's like, trying to like justify yeah. why he ran. And somebody and somebody throws the rat at him. It's very cute. It's very funny. I like it. Uh, we then see Corbett, who is uh, he's got like the full gear set up. He's got he's a, wearing like camo. He's got night vision. He's also set up like a camera mounted yes. to him to point back at his yeah. face, like Blair Witch style. And he actually is like. <laughs> <laughs> like terrified looking around and he's doing the thing where he's like spirits of the house yes i am communicating with you. so funny <laughs> and he he and ed run into who they think the cops are yeah but it's sam, sam and dean. dean who are impersonating sam, cops. sam and dean are like it's the cops yeah yeah they, uh but and they ed, get in there and they start like shining lights yeah, them or whatever, yeah. and then ed kind of goes like wait a minute Hey, you know you guys. Yeah. This and then is... and it takes a second and then Sam goes, Oh fuck. Like, yeah. He's like, it's the remember the Tulpa in Texas? And Dean's like, Well, fuck me. Yes. <laughs> it's like I love that they acknowledge that like it's been a while. They wouldn't immediately recognize each other, but Ed is like, oh shit. And then they're like, oh god damn it, you amateur motherfucks. <laughs> so this is actually this episode. <laughs> This episode marks the second time that Sam and Dean actually use profanity. Right. The, yeah, because it gets bleeped out. They put yeah, like a ghost face yeah. or skull over their mouths when it happens. It's very cute. Yeah. The reality TV show that they're making here with the narrative of the episode is meant to be real life, a found footage film. Sam and Dean are shown to re regularly use profanity, which is bleeped by ghost facers up until basically season eight. Uh, uh, there's a specific episode is probably this was the only instance of showing strong profanity. We'll eventually get there again, but yeah. either suggested or censored. Basically, we haven't gotten anything like that uh, besides that. This was the only instance in the show uh, to use strong profanity, uh, either censored or suggested. But also, Supernatural is the primetime show, so they really can't. They're supposed to be. It's supposed to be a family channel, and therefore, anything beyond bitch or ass, which they love to use. Uh, is not allowed. However, it stands to reason, uh, and both Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles have mentioned this on multiple occasions, that if Sam and Dean were real, 
they would be much more rough around the edges yeah, and course. would definitely swear. Of course, yeah. But it is it is a bit jarring to There's see them. There's a little doing artistic it. license though, but it is I think it works in that moment cuz they're so disappointed to have run into them. But I love that just the whole conceit of this episode that we've just been following them and then just out of the corner we see Sam and Dean, right? Before yeah. they come in the house. So then they're in here and then they kind of wander in. I love that the other perspective, you know, the thing we always talk about, like some people have been like the people that Sam and Dean save have been exposed to these things. How do they continue their lives? Yeah. And this is an episode that literally puts us in the skin of people that Sam and Dean saved from something supernatural and where they are now. And it's really kind of interesting to see Sam and Dean be like secondary characters yeah. in the episode. Cause you're really seeing the other perspective of just like these like insane badasses come in and start talking about fucking ghosts and salt. And yeah. Like <laughs> they, they do this a few times throughout the entire series yeah. and whenever they sort of do that, it, it's always really fun to see Sam and Dean from that perspective, Definitely. like uh, from a different person's perspective. Yes. Love that. So Sam and Dean immediately try to get them out of the house. They're just like, you guys need to get the fuck out of here. Like, let's go. Yeah. And as they're doing that, we then flash to team two who is recording a ghost reliving a horrible death. Because basically- Yeah, the they actually- So it's, yeah, Spruce and yeah. Maggie and yeah. Harry. Yeah. And they actually see and record successfully yeah. a fucking ghost. Yeah. And it's like a ghost that doesn't acknowledge them or whatever. He's kind of old timey. Yeah. And you see him get like blown away, like yeah. shot kind of thing. Yeah, and then disappear. And they're like, "Oh shit! Oh shit!" And it's like it's a ten point nine. It's a blah, blah, blah. yeah, exactly. And they but come, they, they get it. They yeah. actually get the footage. Yeah, they they basically then they run and meet up with the rest of the people who are in there. As Sam and Dean are trying to push everybody out, they're like, "Where's your buddy? Where's your that idiot friend Harry?" Right, and he's like, "Oh, he's somewhere else in the house." And then they come running in, and they're yeah. like, "We recorded this thing fully, not even acknowledging Sam and Dean." And are then there. there's like a little pause, and then Harry goes. Those assholes. Those, those assholes from Texas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I, I, I really love that. It's really funny. The, when we have that moment where he's just like, oh, you guys have the, you guys are the fucking uh, uh, hell hunters or whatever, hell hounds. Yeah. And uh, they're like, oh, wait, we're the ghost we're facers. We're the ghost facers now. Yeah. It's so funny. And so they were basically like, oh, you're dealing with a death echo. And that's not a real threat. Yeah. Like, that's not our concern Yeah, they here. talk about, like, sometimes ghosts are just stuck in the loop of reliving how they die. They sort of force Sam and Dean to a bit be, like, the knowledge keepers in this sort of show. They, like, keep trying to, like, interview them to get, like, more. Because they start, the, yeah. I think the crew starts realizing that they're the ones with the real knowledge. And so they keep, like, pushing them for more information. It, it is interesting, though, to the setup because, like, I mean, obviously Sam and Dean know that Ed and Harry have seen a real yes. spirit before yeah. or a real monster or whatever yeah but it's interesting to just see there's none of that like oh it's a uh, like trying to dance around they're like, like you guys know there's just so scenes of sam turning around and being like sometimes a ghost does blah blah, blah. yeah you know like it's interesting to see them they're not peers because they're obviously operating at different levels but it's they have nice, enough like groundwork that they can just it's nice to see yeah. that there's like at least enough understanding that like the way they talk about ghosts and stuff is different. Yeah. And it's kind of fun to see. Yeah. It's it, it almost feels refreshing for Sam too. Yeah. Like they're like these people are liabilities because they don't know what they're doing, yeah. right? And they're gonna get themselves hurt. But it is kind of you do see a little bit of relief, I think, in Sam specifically, just being like we could just talk about this at least like you guys are stuck. Like we got to get out of here. This at, by midnight, this ghost is going to start killing people, blah, blah, blah. Ghost do this death echo. This like he's more willing to just like give the information and it works in the show too, because they don't like, it doesn't feel like an info dump. It feels like people sharing notes. Yeah. As opposed to like, well, how are you, how are we supposed to teach the audience at home about the monster when they can't even really talk about, the monster to the other people in the episode. Right? Yeah. There's a really great moment where they're like walking, all walking through a hallway. Cause Sam and Dean are trying to get them to the front door so they can kick them out. Yeah. And, and they're sort of Maggie's got the camera and Sam even goes just like, like, can you not, do you have to film this? It's like, does it make you feel better? And yeah. she like lowers the camera and immediately goes, yeah, no, it feels better to have the camera. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's true. It's there's it's it's, it's very like conversational and quick happening, but it feels there's some supernatural. stuff later too with Spruce and Dean. Where, yeah, you know, Spruce is like asking questions, and Dean starts talking. He's like, "No, no, you're not getting yeah. emotional shit out of yeah, me." Yeah, I this. love it. That's really good. <laughs> Sam and Dean uh, uh, try to start pushing them to leave. He talks. Uh, 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 they're just like, "No, no, no." You are going to die. People don't survive this. And they're like, what are you talking about? They're like, if you don't leave by midnight. It, and like, they pull out all this like evidence. Like other this, people. This guy came, never showed up again. This guy came, never seen again. And Ed or someone is like, these look legit. And he's like, it is legit. I get the fuck out of here. the fucking research. So then they go to try to leave and they op- try to open the door and it won't open. Yeah. Is this before or after they realize that Corbett is gone though? That's, I think it's it's, after. it's sort of right around the same time because because uh, that's when right. that's why Corbett disappears. Oh, because right, it's, it's right around midnight. Right, right, right. So they, they can't realize leave. Corbett is gone, and they're trying to look for him. And then you get Corbett's perspective where he's wandering around, being like, "Hello, ghosts." <laughs> he's just so adorable. Friendly spirits, I'm here to connect with you. Yeah, like, it's it's very funny. Uh, and that's when you see uh, uh, of just a flash of a yeah. ghost. And then he gets, he starts being dragged away, and you can hear him screaming. And you're seeing it from the camera that's pointed yeah. at his face. He's like, "No, no, stop!" Ah! And they try and find Corbett, and they they can't. He's gone. Yeah. And then they realize that all the windows and doors are like they call it supernatural lockdown. Yeah. Like they can't even break the doors. Yeah. It's like this is supernaturally sealed in. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like not now, just like wooden doors. They're like now we have to survive. Yeah. So the guy that is playing the ghost is an actor named John DeSantis, okay. who plays Freeman Daggett. Yeah. This is the first of many roles he's going to have on Supernatural. I was going to say, I feel like he, he he's comes got back, like the build for a lot of kind of monster kind of things. He, yeah. I, I won't spoil a lot, but he comes back for two episodes in 2013, one in 2014, and one more in 2017, all playing supernatural characters of yeah, some sort yeah. or another. Uh, once you recognize who it is, you're like... 2017. Yes. Does that does that make him the... I'm going to move away from the mic. D- did he play the... Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, fuck, yeah, I yeah. knew it. Yeah, yeah fuck yeah, yeah. yeah. You can see it in his face. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah. same guy. <laughs> great episode <laughs> so uh, uh so yeah so then now then now they've got to search for corbett and they're they're looking around for corbett wondering where he is uh and there's another emf surge and and they're all sort of standing around in a room i like how they play this too because we've used the thing of like that cameras and stuff catch things yeah, and yeah. whatnot like we've seen that in the show before mm-hmm. And so we, a couple of times with Spruce, we get like a, yeah, and he's like, oh, something's wrong with the camera, blah, yeah, blah, blah. like, and then you're like, oh shit, oh shit, and then he sort of starts recognizing that it's maybe related to so then the things. next times so that it happens, he goes like, something's coming, guy, like that's yeah. kind of like their first warning, yeah, it's, and then yeah. Sam disappears, yeah, F- and you see it on the thing, he literally just like, yeah. like completely gone, uh, so now they're looking for Sam and Corbett, and it's funny just the. The watching the supernatural thing with these guys because Dean immediately is like Sam, yeah, and they're like Corbin, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it Sammy, is. Sammy. <laughs> it's very fun. Just like the juxtaposition between the two of yeah. just like, oh yeah, they're in a supernatural episode now. Like, it's yeah, I I, I really like that moment just because it's like he has to do the Dean looking for Sam thing while they're sort of like our friend's actually gone. Like, yeah. <laughs> just I I I love that. It's a it's a nice sort of it thing. It is very cute. Yeah. And in the heat of the moment, as they're searching for things, uh, Harry and Maggie start making out. Yeah, Harry and Maggie start making out. They've been sort of like touching hands throughout Which the whole you episode kind of and like, stuff. You're kind of just like, oh, they're having a moment. And then the show reminds you that you're watching Spruce's footage and that he's there. Yes. Because Spruce starts going like, bow, chicka, bow, bow. Yeah. like he's just saying that. Yeah. It's so funny how they play that because you're watching it and I would forget yeah. that I'm watching like totally. footage yeah, yeah, until yeah. he goes like, bow, chicka, bow. Yeah. and you're like, oh, he's just fucking there. Yeah. And then Harry sees it happen. Well, Eddie see- Ed sees it. Uh, uh, or, sorry, Ed. Yeah. Ed yeah. sees Harry and Maggie. Yeah. yeah. And that's when he's like my best friend and my best sister. sister yeah. Which is a very <laughs> funny phrasing. Yeah, I, I really like that. And as they're sort of having this confrontation, we then cut to Sam. Well, because Ed and Harry, like, Ed is like, hold my glasses to oh, yeah. Spruce. And they have, like, a fight. And at the end of it, Ed has to walk back to Spruce and be like, ah, oh, my tooth. Like, I won that, though, right? Yeah, very <laughs> funny. Love the dork fight. Yeah, it's really funny. So we then cut to Sam at Daggett's party. 
Yeah. It gets and real again, creepy here. We're yeah. only seeing this through the cameras. That, through Corbett's cameras, through yeah. Corbett's cameras. He has one that faces out, that's one, like across yeah. at Sam, and one that's facing himself, right? The one that he mounted that like points back at him. Yeah, we see Corbett and Sam tied to Ugh. chairs with a birthday cake, and there's a bunch of like dead bodies and suits a around bunch them. Of corpses, yeah. Oh, right. So this is a... And It's My Party's playing in the background. We haven't, I think we've slightly talked about this, this piece, though, in the episode. So they were trying to... Part of the mystery is like, why are death echoes here? Yeah. Because like w- they see a death echo get like hit by a train and yeah. they're like, well, that clearly didn't happen here. Yeah. And then as they're looking through the house, Dean finds these like toe tags from the morgue. Yeah. And he's like, oh shit, like this guy, this Daggett guy that owned the house, he brought the corpses back here for some fun yeah i think that comes out later but but at any rate so the corpses in the basement are the people whose death echoes yes are being seen in the house yeah so Uh, he's uh so so like daggett the the real ghost is like the real threat the things they were seeing before are just like symptoms yeah exactly yeah so yeah it's my parties playing in the background and then it's Daggett so shows up. Yeah. Uh, and it's creepy how, like, calmly oh, yeah. Daggett talks. Like, yeah. he's not saying, like, I'm going to get you open. Like, he's not doing he's shit like, like hey, that. It's he's all right. He's going, like, it's okay. Don't be scared. It won't hurt at all. We're, yeah. We're going to have a party. Don't be scared. It'll all be over soon. He's it's being, like, terrifying. so, like, fucking gentle. And it's, it's crazy. Unnerving. And, Corbett is like, oh, my God. And, like, kind of freaking out. And Sam's like, it's okay, Corbett. We're going to get out of sad. this. This is sad. It's so sad. It's like, if this was a character we had spent any more time oh, with, yeah. I would have been like, oh my God. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like, he just like grabs what looks almost like, it doesn't look sharp enough to actually do the thing that it's about it's to do. It's just like a long pick, It looks It like looks a, like the like like a knife like sharpener thing. Yeah. Like the, and he just pushes it through the back of Corbett's neck and like- Like it, butter. It comes out like through, through his the, throat. And you can see Sam be like, no, no. Like, yeah. It's- in. This episode, again, like so many Supernatural episodes, does such a hard pivot from silly to horrifying. Yeah. And it's like, it's like literally a matter of scenes. We literally just watched a very silly slap fight between Ed and Harry. And then we cut to this kid who did nothing wrong get killed. Yeah. It's, and Sam just like, like tied to this chair, like, it's fucking crazy. It's so crazy. And it's, it's brutal. And they. The way that they use the found footage thing too, that like it's Corbett's camera just pointed at his face, but he's just like like dead, not yeah. moving. It's like, oh fuck. The way it's shot, the limited angles, because yeah. there's only a couple of cameras, because then when Corbett falls over, he's still looking at Sam, but the angle's oh, different, like love he's on that the table. Piece. Like Yeah, you see Daggett. It's gl- not as janky as yeah. like a Blair Witch, like the totally. running kind of thing, but they really play the footage. Yeah thing smartly like it's you can tell there's a little bit it's not quite like well this is what it would be realistic yeah no it's for a sure, little yeah. more artful than that but it's really well done yeah we then and we see daggett walk over to sam and was like hey this isn't gonna hurt at all yeah, don't worry about okay. it don't be scared and he puts a, a party hat on his head oh <laughs> and that that song the whole time yeah it's my party i know it's it's terrifying. It's really bad. Yeah. So then we cut back to Dean and the rest of the team, and Ugh. they're looking for things throughout the house to try to figure out what to do right. next. So they then go into uh, what might be his like bedroom or something, and they they figure out that that he's a survivalist. He's got like yeah, he's got all these like army rations. Yeah, and he's uh, and he's got all these things about like surviving like Ruski attack kind of thing, like very Cold War. Uh, sort of thing and yeah dean finds those toe tags they find out that he worked at a hospital for like 20 years but he was a janitor not like a doctor yeah. or something that's kind of how they start piecing together that he was like stealing from the morgue and shit like that yeah exactly they uh um, and then dean kind of has this thing go off where he's like what sort of person is afraid of commies and eats army rations and then he's like oh fuck cold war he must have like a bomb shelter. Yeah. So it's like, we got to go to the basement. Yeah. So we find, uh, uh, when we're in that, we're in his, like, I think maybe his office or something like that. They do also mention, uh, Maggie says that they find sea rations. So just a fun fact, they, they find boxes of meal combat individual. 
which is uh, uh, Maggie asks for sea rations from World War II, fresh food cooked uh, in a kitchen were A ration, canned foods cooked in a kitchen were B rations, and canned foods that you could cook into the field were C rations. Right. In 1958, those C rations were replaced by canned meal combat individual. All that canned stuff was cooked uh, and could be eaten straight from the can. Since 1980, soldiers have received pre-cooked meals ready to eat MREs in Mylar bags. Right. So kind of like astronaut sort of like yeah. old freeze drag kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So they now, so now they've they they're like, okay, this guy's a survivalist. We need to go to the basement. Uh, so they head to the basement, and they, now. yeah, they open the door, but then the door slams shut and kind of supernaturally seals off. So Spruce and Dean are in the basement. Everyone else is upstairs. Absolutely. And Dean yells up, like, "There's salt in my duffel. duffel. Make a circle and then stand inside it." And, Ed is like in the duffel. He's like in the salt, you idiot! Yeah, like it's so funny. <laughs> it's just... Such a weird thing to put in, but I. But again, you see how out of their element they are. Yeah. That, like <laughs> they want to meet a ghost, but they don't even really get even the salt thing. Yeah. But yeah, so then it ends up being Ed and Harry and Maggie in the salt circle in like the eagle's nest in the command center. Yeah. And and Dean and uh, Spruce. Yeah. Down in the basement. And that's the scene where. Spruce is like saying, like, I heard you and your brother talking earlier that you only have two months to live. Yeah. Is it cancer? He's like, no, you're not going to. I'm not fucking spilling my guts for your stupid TV show. So funny. So funny. Because, yeah, earlier when they were trying to have a private conversation, you sort of see Sam and Dean talk about that. And Sam is like, like, oh, yeah, let's go hunt the Morton house. What a great fucking idea. Now we're going to die here. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Which is very funny. I love that. Yeah. So they break into the basement just yeah. before Sam gets a uh, spike through his neck. Yeah, Dean finds like where the bomb shelter is behind a cabinet. Yeah, rock salt shoots the ghost. Yeah, uh, uh, Daggett before. Yeah, yeah Sam gets and they, ice picked. They break out of the basement. Oh, they find fucking Corbett. It's just so sad. Yeah, it's yeah, it's really sad. And they Sam basically says, "Yeah, this guy's lonely." And they're like, "They don't break out of the basement though. They just get out of the bomb yes, shelter. Yeah, they're still yeah, stuck yeah. in that basement because it's yeah. sealed." Yeah. And they start talking, but they're like, "Oh, this guy's lonely." And Sam's like, "He's a Norman Bates type of lonely." They love coming back to. Bates references yes. yeah. on Supernatural. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, and he uh, and he killed himself after stealing all of these bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Sam says he stole these bodies to have this party because he because he was this lonely whatever. Yeah. Norman Bates type. But he went upstairs and accidentally OD'd on horse tracks. Yeah. So that's why he's also dead. Yes. And haunting and stuff like that. Exactly. And Dean goes, how do you know this? And he's like, he told me. Yeah, yeah. And it's so funny. Like, it works in the episode because we're just seeing yeah, selective footage. Yeah, yeah. But it's funny to just have, like, an info dump that basically happened off screen. Like, he's like, yeah, so I took these tor- horse tranquilizers. And- yeah, like, is that what he's like? Yeah. <laughs> Like, it'd be funny if, like, from Corbett's dead camera angle, he's just like, yeah, so I was going to have a birthday party with all of the, my friends here. And I'm I, pretty lonely. I'm and... Pretty lonely. I'm kind of a Norman Bates type. <laughs> I, it'd be really funny to hear that <laughs> conversation happen. Sam's like, Or uh-huh. the fact that Ed and Harry are like, nah, we'll edit that out. That The yeah. ghost talks a bunch yeah. about himself. We won't put that yeah, in. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's less of, it's not about us. <laughs> it's so funny. I do really like There's that. There's a lot of layers to which that is funny. Yeah. So then we cut to Ed, who is, they're standing, Ed and, uh, and the rest of those team are standing uh, in a circle mm-hmm. inside the, uh, the salt circle. Yes. And Corbett shows up. Well, but I do want to talk about a thing in there. So Ed goes, like, they're legitimately yeah, scared yeah. at this point. Ed goes like, listen, no matter what happens, if we make it out of this, it's okay for you to do my sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With, Maggie kind of like slaps Hits him, him. Yeah. But it's really funny. <laughs> you can do my sister. You can do my sister. It's so That's funny. a bond forged in fire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's when Corbett but, yeah, shows up. Corbett's ghost shows up. And as an echo. Yeah, caught in a, in a death echo, and you see him just kind of like the way he was. Yeah, yeah. Out just of over, and over, and over and over and over and over. And uh, they decide that they need to break him out of it because earlier in the previous death echo, or the one because with the Dean train, tries Dean to, yeah. tries to break the train guy out. Yeah, 
and Sam drops the very like Chekhov's gun yes. nugget of like sometimes you can snap them out of their loop and remind them that they're dead, but you usually need to have some sort of connection with them. Yeah, yeah, because he's just like you're fucking dead. I love this <laughs> moment because it's like Ed is Ed is like no, he's like he's dead and he's. He's like hurting. We yeah. have to help him. And then Harry's like, I know what you could do. Oh my he God. He was in love with you. Yeah. And then Ed's like, what? And he's like, yeah, he was in love with you. You have to be gay with that yeah. ghost <laughs> to save him. <laughs> he's like, I know you could do it. You've always been the brave one. Ed. So funny. Is, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's funny. It's what I would expect out of these kind of characters, yeah, yeah. but it's also like, I, we will get to it because at the end of the episode, they yes. kind of sum it up. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. both very funny and also like. <laughs> it's not problematic, it's but not, it's like right on the edge. It's not problematic, but it is. Yeah, it's, it's only technically not yes. problematic, I think. So Ed walks over and talks to Corbett and it's. <laughs> actually like a very touching and moment. he's like crying. crying he's like i'm so sorry you were amazing you were such an important part of the team and i love you and yeah I'm like it's like it's such like a I'm like holy shit i oh know i got choked up i mean between how serious corbett's death is yeah. and then this scene i'm like holy shit i really care about corbett a I character know. i've seen for 17 minutes <laughs> <laughs> they do and he snaps out of it and he does, and he's and he's like Ed. Oh, oh, it's fucking crazy. It's it's and then crushing. Ed says like you have to help us, like please help and you us. Cut to the basement where yeah. the guys and are, are fighting the ghost, and Spruce is also there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you see through Spruce's camera, Corbett shows up and like ghost tackles yeah. Daggett, and they do a ghost ball Turn into like a ghost ball and then dissipate or whatever i couldn't find anything that specifically says this is the only time that happens but i don't know if that's ever happened i again. don't remember another ghost ball yeah that's they not may like that we'll have to see but i don't ever remember it ever happening again not like this yeah not like this um so yeah he saves them and we go to the next morning yeah and everyone well minus corbett leaves oh. in, alive in the next morning oh, corbett uh, take it uh, and and then yeah, it's interesting because like the guys are usually relatively thorough, but they don't burn any of those, but or at least not that we see. No. We don't see them burn the bodies. No. They're kind of like, ah, oh, let's leave the house haunted. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I assume they do, but Ed and Harry didn't find it interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's either they didn't do it, which is weird, or they did, and Ed and Harry are like, we we didn't do it, so, so we're not gonna throw that. That's not the whole yeah. point of this thing, right? That's a whole other piece of lore. We're not. We don't need to get into. Yeah. So. We that so then we the cut to Ed and Harry back at the fireplace. Yeah, so Ed, it's like their kind of outro piece of the thing. They're lamenting over the loss of their friend in a completely exploitive way. Oh, it totally. Harry is Harry's like you. You're not, as far as I'm concerned, you're not an intern anymore. Yeah, you're a full ghost facer. It's like cold comfort to the guy that died in the ghost house. Even showing like the typical reality confession moment. Uh, yeah. of like th there's the. <laughs> They <laughs> say that Corbin taught them how gay love can pierce through the veil of death and save the day. Yeah, that's the line. Yeah, <laughs> that's the line. Yeah, it's Ed, I think, who says that. Yeah. Yeah. Gay love can pierce the veil of death and save the day. It's, that's the lesson we learned today. Yeah, so funny. Which is... It's I, almost good. The thing is, I, I really don't... Uh, especially compared yeah. to other episodes of early totally. Supernatural... I don't think this episode is particularly homophobic. No, I don't think so. They they treat no, him with a lot of like respect. They never go like, "Oh, he's gay." Yeah, yeah, they're just like Ed is just oblivious. Yeah, Harry doesn't give a shit that he's gay. He just doesn't want it to fuck up. Yeah. ghost hunting, which is realistic. Yeah, and then, and then like Ed has like, not that he reciprocates, but he is like legitimate, like a legitimate emotional connection. And to he Corbett doesn't go that, you like that helps. He, he, yeah. He, and they don't do it where it's like, give him a gay kiss. Yeah. No, yeah. Like, or like, he's just like, Oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to look connection gay. with him. Yeah. Like, this episode is like weirdly good about it. Yeah. The thing that I think makes it feel like it is bad is the joke of the episode, which is how exploitative. Yes. The whole pilot episode is there's that, this, that Ed and Harry are like someone died. Yeah. Like they Technically, for the yeah. rest of the world that yeah. does not believe in ghosts, like a person died and they are like putting it on film. They're like, this will get us to TV. Yeah. 
They there's even this because because they, they fully are putting it on film. We watch yeah. the thing go through Corbett's yeah, oh neck. yeah, like they're blurring out Dean's middle finger yeah, yeah, and yeah. them like swearing in that. But you fully watch someone. Look, you watch it's a the, snuff film. You watch the life leave their yeah. eyes. Like it's it's crazy when you think about it like that. And then to be like flippant about like his legitimate feelings for Ed and stuff like that and be like, gay love saved the day where it's like, it wasn't gay love. You didn't yeah, love yeah, him yeah, back yeah. like no. that. Like you just cared about him. Like, the, well, I, except for that, the love for Ed is what got him to. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just, that's the thing that makes it feel disingenuous and problematic. Yeah, like yeah. where it's like, is this episode homophobic? And like, when no. I thought about it, because going in, I was like, I remembered that yeah. about this episode, and I was like, oof, get ready. Yeah. And then I got through it, and I was like, do you know what? Actually, <laughs> weirdly. Well handled. <laughs> well handled, because it's not like other episodes where someone says, like, two queens, and he goes like, ew, no. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. this episode is just like, yeah, this guy happens to be gay, and again, yeah. they don't make Ed, like, kiss him or something <laughs> no, like that. No. They just have to have a connection. Yeah. It's weirdly well handled yeah. in an otherwise like exploitative and silly and weird episode. Well, there's snuff film. Even the final cut is they there. It's like an interview before they go into the oh. house. <laughs> it's actually it's so heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking. It makes me. I mean, this is not the same thing, but it makes me think like at the end of that Under the Red Hood animated movie. Sure. The last scene of that movie is like. That's Jason Todd as Robin. He's yeah. like, this is the best thing that's ever happened yes. to me. And that you've already watched everything yeah. that happened to him. And it's like, it's the same thing there. Spruce is like, this is a confessional. You got to say something. He goes, do you know what? I think tonight all our dreams are going to come true. true. I really think that. <laughs> and you're like, oh, no. Oh, no. Corbett. Oh, no. And, Corbett. And, no. And we find out that that's actually the end of their pilot. Yeah. Then it, you kind of zoom out. Yeah. And Sam and Dean are watching it. They're all standing around. They're like, so what do you think? And I love that extra beat. Yeah, it's so as this is happening, you 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 basically <clears throat> there there's this in, the actual credits for the beginning of the the supernatural episode yeah. start coming up at this moment. Right. As if now the actual show is going to start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cuz like usually you get the opening credits where it's yeah. like directed by things like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, normally the credits start with the stars and the guest stars. And uh, uh, this episode did it backwards. The producer and crew are shown first, and then the stars and the guest stars are a few minutes after that. So it's just yeah. sort of the whole thing is flipped. Yeah, which yeah. I, I I love that. So yeah, it's funny. So yeah, the, everyone's like, "So what did you think?" And Dean was like, "It was Dean, actually pretty good." Dean or Sam says like, it was it Dean. Was, it, it was half awesome. Yeah, and Maggie's like, "That's basically good. That's that's full good." Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Sam says something like, I like that you managed to find a wholly yeah. <laughs> exploitative way to capitalize on your friend's death, yeah. basically. They're like, yeah, right? They're like, right? <laughs> and then they're kind of like, Sam and Dean are like, this is, yeah, I, I don't know, guys. And they're like, but we got great footage. And Dean's like, I guess I can't argue with that. And they leave. But they're also like, do you real? have you thought about the repercussions of revealing the secrets yeah, they're of like, ghosts? Well, every time we've ever told someone, we get punched or thrown in jail. Or, or in straight jackets. Yeah, yeah. Um, at any rate, they finally leave and the guys are like, they're such dicks. Like both yeah. Ed and Harry are like these fucking assholes. And everyone's like, yeah, assholes. And then they uh, say, hey, Menudo Spruce, left Spruce their is bed. like, I'm going to get some DVDs going. Let's yeah. do this. And then he's like, oh, we're having some technical issues. And yeah, he's like, oh, the guy like left his bag. And it's like a big electromagnet. Yeah. And it's scrambling all the shit. And we cut outside to Sam and Dean. And he goes, you think we're clean? And we just hear like, no! I'm like, yep. And they're like, yeah, we're clean. It's like, I kind of feel bad. I didn't hate it. Yeah. It was a pretty good show. And uh, yeah. And then they they basically peel off in the Impala, uh, yeah. confessing that, yeah. that they, they, they It's funny to like me the that they never, the, the concern they always bring up is people can't know. Yeah. That ghosts are real. Yeah. World's not ready. They even yeah. say it at the end there. Yeah. They don't bring up the, like, we are dead again. We cannot show up on TV. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More importantly. Yeah. Uh, which is the thing that, yeah, they don't really ever touch on again in yeah, the series, I, I think. Yeah, yeah. But it's definitely, like, I think sort of slightly Im implied. And that's the end of the episode. Wow. <laughs> Is this the first like super meta episode like this? I think it's the first episode that is 
this meta like recontextualized and like from a different perspective and sort of where the viewing of the show itself yeah. is commentary on the yeah. show yeah yeah and stuff like yeah i think this is really you know like they've they've pushed a little you know with some other things but just in little tiny ways <laughs> this is the first kind of like full like what I would call like a concept episode. Yeah. You know, and Supernatural will come back to concept episodes a lot yeah. as the series goes on. But this is the first one where it's like, no, 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 you're not actually watching Supernatural. You're watching Ghostface. Yeah. And then at the end, even that thing about yeah. moving the credits where it's like, now that's the Supernatural yeah. episode. Like even that, yeah, you're playing with the form of it yeah. so much. I think it's the first time they really do that. I, I think it's so great. And what's interesting is that they had enough foresight to, even though this episode actually doesn't have a lot of viewers, like the viewership drops dramatically. They're like, no, we're right. And oh, I, yeah. I, I think that's really important because... And yeah, I, and that I, they don't look at it and go like, ah, oh, fuck, we shouldn't do this again. I wonder if, because they they were really active on online when this show was coming up. It was sort of like... right. Part of that huge influx of like internet culture, uh, 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 yeah, sort of coming together with entertainment, and I wonder if because I did I couldn't find anything specific, but I wonder if the fan reactions were really positive because this show was so tied to uh, responding to fan reactions and yes. things like that. So, I mean, I'll spoil that this isn't the only time we're gonna get the Ghost Facers. No, this is not the last time we see Ed and Harry. So I do wonder if. The fan reactions were probably really strong, even though the viewership wasn't really big. This show has never really cared that much about high yeah. viewership and cares more about f like playing to the fan base. And yeah, the the yeah, because the, and they do come back to the metal well, yeah, a lot. Which if if you had looked at the at the numbers even from this, down maybe to like that thing you were talking about, where it's like the opening gets interrupted, yeah, that happens again, yeah. In future, so I episodes, think they they, know, they like must have been like fuck the the viewership. Like the people who love this show love this stuff. Yeah. We're not like I'm glad that they didn't take that as a sign of not not moving forward I, with that kind of I thing. I will say maybe more than most other shows, Supernatural seems to just be very. I mean, part of that too is that Kripke is still involved totally. these first five seasons. But sure. even after that, Supernatural is definitely a show that's like, no, that's the swing we took and yeah. we stand by it. Yeah, there's very little backtracking to totally in supernatural yeah and i really appreciate that where they're just like no like we set this thing up because we believe in it yeah. we're gonna keep fucking going and maybe it doesn't land like yeah. not everything on supernatural lands like, well we're, and we're gonna get to later seasons where we're gonna be like Ugh. but yeah. like they just do it and yeah. i really i really like that about the show they learned lessons, like I've, as we've talked about, especially that first season. Kripke has a lot of negative things to say about some of the stuff in that first season. Yeah, sure. But overall, the like big swings and the are stuff that like they stand by and will continue to do. It's more of like incidental stuff or like weird arc things that they sort of or like problems with like writing. But the actual like big swings they stand by. They don't really back off. No, very much. If or, anything, or if they do. It doesn't, it's not super apparent. No, if anything, they go, next time we're going to go bigger. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of doubling down. And when, you know, for 15 seasons, you end up with a very large number when you do that. You know? Yeah. Like, it's pretty, yeah. I, and this episode is a great example of it where they're like, that fun thing that we did where these guys were sort of fake paranormal yeah. things and then they made a thing real and yeah. then they saw a real thing and yeah. they met real ghost hunters. Yeah. Let's go a step further. These guys are trying to capitalize on it. Sam and Dean are trying to keep it under wraps. Yeah. So there's the new level of the dynamic. Yeah. And then, yeah, to go like, if we're doing that, we might as well just watch their episode. Yeah. I love all of the layers of that swing. And, and I'm really glad that they go back to that because sometimes they're very narrative. Like they're very like season arc. Important. Yeah. Yeah. But the meta episodes of Supernatural are some of the most fun ones because, I mean, by definition, because they get to wink at what they know the yeah, fans like yeah. or dislike. They get to kind of riff on the things they know are tropes that they lean on. Yeah. Like, you get to be like, yeah, we know. You know yeah, like, exactly. I kind of enjoy that shit. And it does give Supernatural a way to come back to something funnier and lighter, even when 
the subject matter of the season arcs is like grim as shit. Yeah. It's such like a way to like claw back to kind of like the funner vibe of the mm-hmm. show. And I really enjoy that. Totally. Yeah. So <sighs> the reviews reviews. I, uh, we, I talked a bit about the, like the way it's shot. Yeah. They, are so smart about it because we do, you know, when they set up those static cameras, yeah. it gives you wide shots. Yeah. Like they find a way to do wide shots and cut between like when they're fighting Daggett in the basement, we yeah. cut to the camera that Spruce set up yeah. earlier. It's, and again, the thing, you know, like with Corbett and the way he dies, like, is it super realistic or would he just slump forward and you just be like looking at his legs? Probably that. And yeah. I could see some director being like, that's realistic. But it's like, yeah, but it sucks. Yeah, yeah. And I like that they're like, we can add a little art to it. We can take a little poetic license with it. And for it's not the so- sake of the storytelling in that, but yeah. it's still believable. It's still believable. It fits. It, you're almost calling more attention to yeah. it. You know, where it's like that specific angle of Corbett is dead and his head hits the table. And then you're looking at Sam like on yeah. an angle and you see Daggett walk around. Yeah. That is. The creepiest shot in the whole episode. Yeah. It's so good. And I love that that's in there. And I love the, I love the awareness, you know, Harry and Maggie kissing and you're just watching it. You go like, yeah, they did it. And then you remember that Spruce is holding the camera because he starts commenting. (laughs) Like that shit is so funny. Because the, what's the thing that we would have made fun of? Yeah. If he didn't do that, we'd be like, yeah, we saw them kiss. He's like, so I guess Spruce is just watching them, huh? Yeah, like, yeah. we would have just said that. Yeah. But the show's like, yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah. And I really enjoy that. Um, so the, the way it's shot, the conceit of the whole episode, really, really well executed and well sold for me. Yeah. Even down to the, like, the weirdly exploitative and yeah. so sad, like, Ending on Corbett, but yeah. pre the thing where he's like, all our dreams are going to come true. Oh. You're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, it, it's a, again, a great episode for taking really something very silly and then immediately pivoting to something horrifying. Yeah. Or emotional. You know, Ed has a legitimate emotional moment with Corbett. It's actually really beautiful. And he, like, that actor does a great job. Yeah. Um, they play the tropes of reality TV really well. Mm-hmm. I love them trying to do the fake slow mo walk out of the co- like, so good. It starts so silly and it ends so silly. Gay love pierces yeah. the veil of death. Yeah, yeah. But in the middle, it's such like a very real experience. Yeah. And I really like that. It's fun to see Sam and Dean as like guest characters in their own yeah. show. I think it's probably fun for them too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean this this episode is great. I'm giving it. I'm giving it um, five corpse parties. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't disagree with you. I mean, th- it's it's crazy because when I think about the other episodes that I've given fives to, and and I'll just I'll just go on the record. I've given fives the last three weeks now. Yeah. Here's the thing. Which feels like I'm being generous, but I think they're all, all three of those are insanely strong episodes. And and drastically different Mystery Spot, directions. Mystery Spot, Juice Bellow, and yeah. Ghost Facers. Drastically different concepts. All of them different from each other. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. To, and, and it's a thing that this show is going to continue to do, which is like, they're going to double down. They're going to... The, this the creation of ghost facers i mean hey this this is the reason why we named the show this like yeah it's it's a parody of the thing that they're doing and a thing somebody and the thing that's actually happening in reality at the time yeah the uh, this show is so so self aware yes that as they're constantly going through they go oh we know don't worry we'll comment on it not only are they commenting on and and answering the things that you're already thinking while you're watching the show because you're like well if this then this yeah and they answer those but they also go you're probably making fun of us because of this we're going to get to it first and also take somebody else down in the in the meantime while never being really mean-spirited about it yeah yeah like they they're there's so many steps ahead they're constantly going like yeah you these two guys doing ghost hunting we know that there's people doing that reality we're gonna make fun of those people yeah also like there's a bunch of other aspects of the show that they'll eventually attach uh, attack later on like they they are so aware of the show that they're making while still being like no what we're doing is good we're not we don't think what this is bad they're totally giving the sort of like credit to 
we understand that you like this component of it and that's fair, but we're also going to take it down a few notches sometimes too. Yes. Yeah. It's so many different levels. This show is, this episode specifically is funny. It is emotional. It's scary. Like it's all of the things that I think that they figured out this season that they're allowed to do without it, any one of them sort of negating the other components of it. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, it's the reason why we're called Ghost Facers. It's, it's, it's parodying itself. It's parodying a whole other genre. Like, I, I love this. And every time we get to Ghost Facers in this series, I always get really excited. Yeah. I, I, I think that the, it's, it's a weirdly polarizing component of this show. Sure. Uh, I think that, like, the fan base is definitely, like, uh, it, some people hate the ghost facers, which right. I kind of love. I'm like, yeah, you're supposed to hate the ghost facers. They're annoying. It's funny. Yeah. Like that's the humor in and it. And it, it, the funniest thing about them is no matter how many times they encounter the legitimate, terrifying supernatural, they're still like, we can make money. How from can this. we make money on this? Yeah. Like, they never lose that. No, it's very, they're funny. not like we are terrified of these things, but we also know after that Tulpa, they should be like, never mind. Yeah. But yeah. instead they're like, no, now we know it's out there and we're right. Yeah. And now so we're, we can, now we're experts. Yeah. Now we have like, we are, have a better shot of capitalizing on this yeah. than anyone. Yeah. Like, it, they double down. Yeah. I love the metatextual stuff. I, I like that they've, they don't slump into some of the like homophobic stuff from previous episodes. Yeah. And again, like my memory of this episode, I was like, uh oh. Uh-oh. And then I was watching it. I was like, no, like the show is learning. Yeah. The show's figuring it out instead of treating the gay thing as like, I mean, they, it is technically a punchline, but it's only a punchline for Ed and Harry in that they are capitalize like the joke is that they are capitalizing yeah but they think they're being sincere or profound yes because they have a profound experience and then can't translate it when yeah. they're doing that sort of like masterpiece theater thing yeah that's the joke the joke is never that corbett is gay yeah and that's so so much further than the show has been you know what i mean like it's, yeah. it's definite growth yeah the, the ghost facers are us it's two guys who are like there's subtext of homosexuality. There's <laughs> yeah, and their yeah, their families are weirdly intertwined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's us. It's it's uh, we're commentating on a thing that's commentating on a thing that yeah, we are desperate to try and get rich off someone else's work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also supernatural guys. Yeah. 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 Sam and Dean would hate us. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a reflective of us. It's... <laughs> So I should hate it, but I don't. No, I don't at all. No. So I will, of course, give this episode five out of five pierces of the veil by uh, Gay Love. Oh, five out of five Gay Loves? Yeah. Wow. That's literally three weeks in a row that we've given fives. I mean, and the episodes that are coming, like, I don't know. Is it is the train going to keep running? And we gave... we gave fives a couple of weeks before that grouping, and we gave fives for... The start of this season, and you gave one extra five this yeah. season. The, I mean, we've talked about it a bunch. Yeah. Season three, crazy strong. Yeah. And maybe it's also just because there's only 16 episodes. Yeah, we only got three more episodes left. Isn't that wild? We're going to get to season four before the end of this calendar year. That's... We're going to start into season four. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. I. Oh, God. We, technically, we are going to start on season four. November 8th. Holy shit. Will be season four, episode one. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's wild. God, what a good season. Yeah, crazy. I'm, I'm, I, yeah. God, the show is good. When it's great, it's great. It really, it really is. It's true. Well, that is it for this week. If, uh, if you have a note about maybe a future episode or uh, maybe something that we missed in this one or a past one, we get that sometimes. I really, really love that. I oh, mean, yeah. I don't mind going back and, and talking about uh, uh, something from from uh, like a previous episode. Yeah, but remember, don't hurt our feelings. We can't do anything wrong. Yeah, no, 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 no. We are We're infallible. Sensitive little boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 yeah, I think I just got something the other day. I'm trying to find it. Oh yeah, so we got uh, uh, we got a note from Fell Hunter recently. Sure. Yeah, let's have it. Uh, from uh, Lurch 1789. Oh, you right. Yeah. <laughs> uh who's uh they they ask us uh, uh about something that happens in the future episode that uh so i i probably won't talk too much about it sure. now but uh i love getting that stuff yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so lurch we will get to it 
We just don't want to. We don't want to spoil it before yeah, it's uh, absolutely before we're there. Oh, and then we also got one from Clara W. Uh, uh, telling us about the mystery spots German title. Oh, okay. Yeah, we yeah, should yeah, definitely yeah. talk about that. Who says, "Hey guys, I really enjoy listening to the podcast. The international title bit is really funny, but it sometimes agitates my inner smartass." We get it. Yeah, yeah. We're a couple fucking nerds. Yeah, it's, yeah. We absolutely get it. So. Here's some lore on the German title for Mystery Spot if you're interested. Sure. The German title for Groundhog Day is Und uh, Taglich. Oh, God, I won't do this. Okay, it's a bunch of German words. Uh, do you want me to read it? Nope, it's okay. Okay. Uh, and, and, tra- <laughs> and translates to and daily greets the groundhog. Right. Uh, that phrase has actually worked itself into everyday vocabulary and is used to describe annoying situations that happen regularly. So the German title for Mystery Spot is just a reference to Groundhog Day. Oh, okay. So if you have, if you, and the, she goes on to say, uh, if you ever want to uh, want some background on info on German titles, feel free to ask, although that might ruin some of the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I'm fine with ruining jokes after the episode. Oh, the one who wants the lore. Yeah, let's do it after. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for such a fun podcast. The lore segment is really interesting, and the jokes often make me laugh, which is rare for me. Uh, German, I get it. So good. (laughs) Oh, my God. Did we just break Germany? (laughs) Yeah. You know, things would have been a lot different if we had this (laughs) podcast in 1939. Well, we're going to do it, but that's a very funny joke. Yeah. Let's just say it would have been a shit's creek. You yeah. all would have been shitting yourselves laughing instead of doing what you were doing. Yeah, I mean, look, think about it. Uh, you shouldn't be making laugh. A French guy and a Jew made the German laugh. I think we're doing all right. Yeah, we really would have turned the tide. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? Maybe it's not all bad. <laughs> uh, I, I was joking. Pull back the troops. <laughs> I was joking. I was joking. So sorry. I've been listening to this podcast. I thought maybe I would try a joke too. Yeah. I did not mean to. Maybe I went a little bit too far. (laughs) Yeah. I'm I'm bitching too far. What what do you expect? I'm an an artist. Uh, (laughs) Greetings from Austria, Clara. Thank you so much, Clara. Thank you, Clara. Love that so much. And uh, yeah. So. From Austria. yeah. Yeah. Love it. So send us much like these other two people, an email. Yeah. Ghostfacerspodcast at gmail.com. And we are also all over the social medias. I'm all over it. Yeah. I'm over it. <laughs> it's Ghostfacers Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can reach out and give us comments, tell us what you thought of episodes and stuff like that. It's always, okay. always fun. Yeah. and Or just Thirst Over Dean. We're also very okay with that. Thirst Over Dean. Yeah. I guess maybe like a little over Sam, but like, let's be honest. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little over Sam. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe also so you can get our episodes every single week automatically. Uh, it helps us, uh, in, including helping us. Give us those five-star reviews. Yeah, please. Uh, all those uh, platf- all those podcasting platforms that you use. Listen, it's not that I don't love being like high on the charts in like Eastern European nations. Poland, we're always pretty high up there. Poland, Hungary, uh, even like Western Europe, Portugal. Yeah. Love that. I would love to crack some charts in Canada and the US though. England, yeah. And I don't give a shit about it. Uh, but obviously if it's not on the Apple podcasting platform, yeah. you just have to take a screenshot of what you wrote, uh, and you can send it to yeah, us through review, email. Review us anywhere. Yeah. Send it by, uh, send it by email. We'll read it on the show. We love doing that. That's fine. Right. Uh, also we've got merch. Yeah, baby. Ghostfacerspodcaststore.com. And we've got t-shirts and sweaters and all that fun swag. So make sure that you show the whole world. I'm wearing one right now. You are. It looks yeah. good. Yeah. I love the sweater. Um, so yeah, show the whole world how much you love ghost facers, uh, by getting some of that stuff and if you want to show even more love to us we have a whole other podcast that i think you might find interesting yeah check out the dr dc podcast award-winning podcast podcast award winners yeah uh yeah we talk about dc comics we talk about superheroes (laughs) if you like how we talk about lore and how magic and ghosts and shit like that works over here we also talk about magic and ghosts and shit over there yeah as well as superheroes and aliens and, so much crossover uh, powers and stuff like that it's a lot of fun you don't need to know anything about it it's just a, a place to have fun and, yeah and sort of shit talk slash have fun with uh uh Speaking superhero of talk, comics we're also on tiktok for dr dc i recently started i broke th- you got viral i broke the series You're viral i yeah i mean probably not, t- not much 
not viral in terms of what counts as viral for TikTok, but viral for, for the way me, you were in college. For me, <laughs> you, you know, God. Oh no, I'm not. I was never viral in college. <laughs> Uh, but yes, I, I've started posting on the Dr. DC TikTok. It's at Dr. DC. That one video is over 10,000. It is. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So that is it for this week. Say goodbye, bitch. Jerk. podcast.